Hi everybody and welcome back to Wild Side Wednesday. This week we are going to discuss short fin pilot whales. These are one of those target species that we get very excited about finding. Um, anytime we see our short fin pilot whales, we are definitely grabbing those cameras and GoPros to try to get as much footage as possible. Uh, we don't see them all the time, but it definitely brings us lots of excitement. And that way we can also try to do some photo identification and just getting the pod size, the location, any kind of behaviors, and send that off to Cascadia Research Collective to help them out with some of their research of the short fan pilot wells here in the Hawaiian Islands. Now, what is a pilot well? What do they look like? These pilot wells are very dark. Um, they're kind of like a blackish and sometimes brownish color. Uh, they have a dorsal fin that it has a very broad base and it has almost like a hook shape. And with those males, theirs is going to be much larger than the females and definitely thicker. Now, they also have this little white stripe right along here. It looks like a white eyebrow on their bottom or on their heads. And then if you were to flip that pilot well over and you look at their bellies, they would actually have a marking that looks like a white anchor. Um, so that's another way that we can distinguish them. Their blowhole is not a perfect circle. It's more of like a little swoop. And then they do have a somewhat melon shaped head. Um, so their head's very round, but it can be a little flattened in the front. And their pectoral fins have very pointed ends. And their tails or flukes will sometimes curl upwards, especially as they get older. Um, one day we actually found a pilot whale out here and I decided to name it Curly because its fluke had actually curled all the way up and it looked almost like a mustache. And you're probably asking yourself, why are they called pilot whales? Well, short fin pilot whales, one, short fin comes from the size of those pectoral fins. They are pretty short compared to other animals. Um, and then when it comes to pilot, uh, you will have a leader of the pod who kind of serves as a navigator or pilot for them. And that leader will actually just guide them. Everybody else will follow them. As it's just leading the pod, they are following no matter what these circumstances are. It can be good and it can be bad. Literally, they could follow into situations that could end up leading to death. And that is why they are called a pilot. Pilot whales are very social animals. Um, one, their pod size can range anywhere from about 15 to maybe about 80. Um, here in the Hawaiian Islands, a very common size of a pod will be about 18. Now, the other reason they are very social is they're not always just going to be with their species, guys. We can actually see them interacting with other species out here. Um, anywhere from a cuvier beaked whale to our melon headed whales, maybe even pygmy killer whales and rizzo dolphins, anything like that, guys. They will just be hanging out with them, guys, um, which is awesome for us. It gets to us to see some interspecies interacting. Some of these short fin pilot whales are actually residents. Um, here in the Hawaiian Islands, in the main Hawaiian Islands, researchers have found various residents uh, since the 1980s that they continuously see. These pilot whale caps can be anywhere from about 40 to 80 kilograms in weight. And then as far as their size, they can be about 1.9 meters. When it comes to the size of our short fin pilot whale adults, they can reach sizes up to 7.3 meters and then weighing up to about 3.5 tons. As far as the age of our pilot whales, um, our females are going to live longer than the males. They tend to live to be about in their mid-60s, 
where the males are usually going to pass away in their mid 40s. Now keep in mind, those males are going to have a lot to do. They are going to probably be in a lot more fights. Um, they have a lot more duties. Um, but then also they are a lot larger than the females, so that could be part of it as well. When these females are about nine years old, they are going to get sexually mature. And they will have a gestation period of about 14 to 16 months and when they will have their calf. And then as far as those males, they're going to be in their teens before they become sexually mature. So it's definitely later in life. All right, so our pilot whales can have their calves about every five years and they're going to maybe have four calves in their lifetime, maybe five. And they're going to actually nurse them for about two years. And they actually do hit a period of menopause where they can no longer have calves. Uh, now, as far as that menopause, she's usually going to stop having the ability to have a calf once she hits her 30s, maybe mid 30s. Um, that last calf that they have, they might nurse it a way longer than it needs to be, but she's just giving it the extra love because our pilot whales are definitely animals that show lots of emotion. They definitely feel the loss of animals as well. Uh, there have been sightings of maybe there was a miscarriage or maybe the calf just didn't survive. Um, so the pilot whales have been seen actually holding their calf and carrying it along with them for a while as they are grieving for the loss of the dead. When it comes to some of the behaviors that we see, most of the time we're just going to see them logging or simply resting on the surface. Now there are times as the boat is either just sitting there or cruising by really slowly that we will see these short fin pilot whales do a little spy hop where they just go vertical in the water, they pop that head up, and they're just checking us out. Now, these pilot whales do use echolocation, and they are going to use that for navigating as well as going for their prey. Um, they're going to make different tones, and it'll help them get to their prey and maybe even draw that prey in. Now, when it comes to communicating throughout that pod, they can use specific tones for them to communicating with each other that'll be different for when they're out and about hunting. When it comes to what do they eat, uh, usually it's going to be some mid-sized squid uh, or maybe some of these smaller deep water fish. Uh, these guys definitely stay offshore, so they're going to be diving down to get their food. And as far as predators, it's really hard to say, guys, what their predators are. Um, there's very little like as far as scars that we have been seeing uh, but they have seen one individual before who had large rake marks on their body um, and with those markings it was assumed that it was a killer whale uh, and then there's assumptions that some of the larger oceanic sharks could be predators as well but like I said it's really hard to specifically say and according to the IUCN Red List, as far as 2018, the short fin pilot whales are considered to be least concern. Now, some of the top threats of this species is going to be the drives, where they are driven into these areas and they are basically killed, like harpooning. 
Um, a lot of this we hear uh, taking place in areas like Japan, um, and it is definitely something that we definitely try to share information on when it is happening, uh, but it is one of the largest issues. Now, they also have threats when it comes to longline fishing because they do like to steal the fish from the fishermen. Um, and then also they can get tangled up in different nets as well. Uh, one other thing is going to be noise pollution. Uh, it could be from the larger ships that are offshore, um, maybe military ships. Uh, they're going to hear the pinging and it could disrupt their communication. They could be drawn to it. And finally, you have the boats just driving over them. Uh, they could be speeding through the water and they could hit them. But ultimately, one of the threats is going to be whaling operations um, where they are harvested. That is definitely one of the top threats for the species that we hear about the most. In 2019-2020 season for the cove or the dry fishery that takes place in Taiji, Japan, the quota for short fin pilot whales was 101 individuals. Um, if you're ever wondering about more information about this, uh, feel free to follow either the Dolphin Project or Rick O'Berry as he helps spread information about what happens there as well. Now, pilot whales are not the only individuals that are facing um, threats when it comes to this. There are many other species of marine mammals that go through this as well. Thank you all for joining us again for this Wild Side Wednesdays. Feel free to drop your comments below and to share this video with your family and friends. And join us again next week for our next topic. We'll be releasing it soon. And if you guys have any species or any topics you want us to discuss, feel free to let us know. We're always open for new options. Thank you so much. Bye.